and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the board game review. Hey, Cody! Show. Knock, knock. Who's there? Wooden. Wooden who? Wouldn't you like to play some board games? Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the American Civil War Hold the Line from Worthington Games. Hold the line, the American Civil War from Worthington Games. One side takes on the Union armies, while the other side controls the Confederates. Players essentially have a number of units, which are made up of numbers of blocks. For instance, infantry has four blocks, cavalry has two blocks, artillery has two blocks. You also have leaders, which are a single block. Now, most of these uh, units will also have a, one of your blocks will have a morale on it. It will either be green for, you know, fresh units, uh, black for uh, kind of veteran units, and gold for elite units. And these morale colors will come into play during the game. Now, depending on the scenario, during a player's turn, they will have a base number of action points. They will also then roll a d3 at the beginning of their turn to determine how many more action points they get for that round. Then they will activate units one per action dice, all things being equal. You can move, you can fire um, for an action point. If you want to do a close combat, that is kind of like a close melee attack, that costs you two action points. Essentially, for ranged fire, you're going to look at the number of spaces between you and your target, your unit and the target, and you are going to go ahead and see, uh, consult a chart which tells you how many die you're going to roll. Uh, typically, you're going to roll three die for infantry units, but depending on how far away it is, it's going to be, it's going to be harder to hit. Uh, two hexes away is, I think, six, but if you're adjacent, it's going to be a five or a six. Now, terrain is also going to be a factor. You've got hills, you've got uh, rivers and bridges and forests. You have uh, stone houses and walls. You have all sorts of things that are going to, of course, influence a, the battle and make it more difficult for people in cover to take hits. Now, during a close combat action, you would actually spend two action points in order to engage. Again, this is like a melee charge. Now, depending on the number of hits that you inflict on your enemy, they're going to roll the morale die. Now, if the morale die is equal to the is the same color rather than the morale token on that flag, which is known only to you, uh, the defender, then that unit must retreat. Uh, however, the specific terrain may influence; they may change that morale, and so that is the color you're going to be looking for, not necessarily the one that's printed on the unit. Now, when moving, you can actually order forced marches. You can order your infantry units to move two spaces instead of one. They can do this so long as they do not begin and or pass by any directly adjacent to any enemy units. But if a leader is attached, then those units can uh, ignore the adjacency rule and can begin and or move across uh, the, any of the enemy units. Now, as soon as one of your units is destroyed, you give the uh, unit with the, uh, the the block with the flag on it to the opposing player as a trophy. Now, typically, you're looking for a set number of victory points, and each one of those flags uh, flag units represents one victory point. The first side to get to that specific number of victory points immediately wins. Hold the line. So that's just a brief rundown of how you play uh, Hold the Line in the American Civil War. Now, Zach and I are both really big fans of the Commands and Colors okay. games. Uh, Zach, uh, let's just go. What, what, what did you think of uh, Hold the Line in the American Civil War? Well, it was kind of a take on the Command and Colors uh, mechanic, right? Right. Uh -huh. uh, instead of having the cards, which I know some people maybe have a hard time with because it's so random, they introduced this different system where you have dice, and the dice tells you how many actions you get to take. Uh, so it really feels like Command and Colors, but it's a completely different uh, way to do it. And and I think too, along with that, part of the the 
the, I mean, the difference is that with the cards, it's mm -hmm. telling you where you can take your actions. Yeah. Here, you have total control over the whole board over where you can take the actions, right? Yeah, you're not nearly as limited as you are with the cards. You, you, it, it, it assigns the number of actions, and then you can do whatever actions you want. The only limit is how many you can do versus when or what exactly what spot of a game. Right. You, you, roll, you roll that D3. You get so many base actions, you roll the D3, you get the additional mm -hmm. actions, and then you can... So instead of cards, randomness, it's a dice roll randomness right. as far as actions yeah, go. Um, so we played a few scenarios in this uh, the other mm -hmm. night, and I know it seemed like right, there were a few little things in the rules that we kind of had to figure out that were maybe right. a little different, like some of the things about the... The, the morale stuff that was going on is a little different in the yeah. way you got colors on some of the uh, on some of the yeah that, that that was a little tricky but once we got it it really was fun yeah it was it's it's a uh, I was gonna say with the exception of those things it's a pretty easy to game learn oh. if you are familiar with commands and colors and commands and colors is not hard to learn at all no 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 it's very easy no, so very we got right into it I mean we were playing it we got right into this mm -hmm. game. And I think I can say, right off the bat, we were both having a lot of fun, right? Oh, yeah. When you want to play it again, right when you're done playing yeah. it, that's a good sign. We, we finished it. We were actually thinking about playing another game, and Zach's like, let's play this one again. Let's play, let's this, play one this one again. again. And, and, and we did, and uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And it's, it's one of those things, too, is it's a relatively quick game. Like, mm -hmm. the scenario's usually under an hour, right? Oh, yeah. And there is some time for setup, because you've got to find all the tiles, and, mm -hmm. and so there is some setup that's involved. But the actual game lasts pretty pretty quickly, and it's it's uh, you know it's fun because it, it feels there's that frustration you saw that same frustration uh, in in commands and colors with the cards if you don't have the cards here you don't have the actions to do yeah um, but it's it's still fun you've got the you, you know you're trying to hit the enemy you're trying to charge their lines you got the the bayonet close melee attacks. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got you know artillery fire, which if you can get your artillery into position is just awesome. Yeah. Uh, but it was really a lot of fun. Uh, do you have any? Is there any? I don't ask you if you like this more or less than the Commands and Colors game, but let me ask you this: In your opinion, with this game, with the system, was there any negatives? Is there anything you didn't particularly not like? Um, <clears throat> no, you're right. Taking comparisons out of this, there wasn't anything I disliked. No. About it. Uh, you need to be aggressive early on in this game. That was kind of... I looked at it and I thought, yeah, this isn't a game where you set up. You're already set up. That's yeah. one of the reasons I think it's so fast. Yeah. Because yeah. some games you're spending like a whole half hour, 45 minutes of the game trying to position everything, and then you get to play the game where this game, it had you all in position, you just start doing it now. You launch off and yeah. you, you're right into it, right? Which I really like. So kind of cut out some of that uh, and, early stuff. And it's in, in some of the scenarios, like in Shiloh, which is one of the scenarios we played... It, it doesn't really benefit you know, the Confederates, the turtle, right? You've got to, to, to start moving. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's, you've got kind of the more units, you've got the more initiative. The, the Union Army has guys coming in. But, but the Union Army, if they can hold their ground long enough, they'll win, right? Yeah. And, but it was good. It, it, it's fun. I like the way you take the, the, these battle scenarios, the history of the battle scenarios, you abstract them, you turn them into this system. It works very well. Now, we, I think the first Commands and Colors game we ever played was Battle Cry. Right? Yeah, I think it was Battle And it was very... So, this game, to me, was very reminiscent of Battle Cry. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I might say I maybe like this a little better than Battle Cry. Yeah. However, I liked other Command and Colors, Colors games game maybe better. Command and Colors Napoleonics being, I think, the gold standard. Yeah, well, I agree. Yeah. Napoleonics is my favorite Command yeah. and Colors as well. But, but you know, I, I would agree. I think maybe I did like this a little bit better than Battle Cry too. Mm -hmm. It was... But you know what? Good, good integration of the history... And fun gameplay. Now, again, oh, yeah. like a Commands and Colors, there's an abs there's abstraction here. Mm -hmm. So just bear in mind, you're, you're, you know, these are not deep, deep, deep historical scenarios, yeah. right? They are games that are abstracted out there. If you like that sort of thing, like I do, like like Zach does, mm -hmm. uh, I think people are really going to enjoy it. Zach? No, oh, I totally agree. I totally agree. It's a very, uh, it's a very fun game, very quick game, very easy to learn. Um, yeah, no, I totally agree. Game came out a few years ago, yeah. and uh, we just played it this year. But it's uh, one of the best games I've played this year so far, as far as I'm concerned. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah. So I think what you're saying, the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Hold the Line Civil War is buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. Or Twitter. We ask you to uh, leave a thumb for us for this video on BoardGameGeek if you've enjoyed it. And if you like military history, please check out my other channel, Cody Carlson, PhD. We are The Discriminating Gamer, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Cody! Knock, knock. Who's there?
I like a... I like a who? I like a who for showing me all these board games. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Can somebody help me on my feet again? And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Can somebody help me on the solid ground? It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. <sighs> okay, so they are going to fire on that. So that's uh, three die at six. That was pretty good. That just really sucked. <laughs> Man, I could treat it all too soon. Oh, my you went to reinforce your left, but now you left your right exposed. Oh, my gosh. All right. That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm glad I got that one on camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs>